Well, it's still Plus Sports, Special and Plus TV Africa. And now we have Sally Fawaz, who is a boxing promoter based here in Nigeria, Lagos to be precise. Uh, of course, joining us this morning. Good to have you with us, Sally. Thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, uh, so you, you heard the conversation with um, Larry and, of course, uh, Ben Gray. I'd like to hear your own thoughts of what we've talked about so far. Yeah, I, I, I watched, um, uh, you know, uh, what you had with Ben Gray and obviously Larry Akundayo. And I think, you know, I'll start first with Ben Gray. Uh, he was spot on about uh, everything, uh, really, about Nigerian boxing and, um, you know, the disadvantages and advantages that we have, you know, as a country. And uh, as for Larry, you know, uh, watching his fights and all that, you know, personally, uh, I mean, you guys know how much I uh, care about Nigerian boxing. And, um, and, you know, in, in boxing, you don't have uh, time time to waste. And, uh, you know, to, to see him, uh, you know, still waiting to fight his, his world title, you know, uh, t t touches me, basically. And I can understand, you know, um, the, the, the lack of sponsorship and lack of involvement from, you know, uh, corporate people in the country. Um, but, yeah, um, they have plans uh, to, to fight a, a title fight in Nigeria. Um, hopefully, you know, it all goes to plan because, you know, that's what we really want. And, you know, when I hear things like, um, you know, our boxers in Nigeria need to find an exit, you know, I can understand from what point um, he's coming through, you know. But we we have everything that it takes in Nigeria to, um, you know, bring world title fights here for boxers to go abroad. You know, we have everything that, that we need. It's just, um, you know, a matter of, presentation and and for the right people in the country to understand that um, num number one this is the fastest growing sport in the country right now in terms of fans and and cult like fans if you like and number two it's the most realistic chance for us to you know become world champions which I mentioned the last time I came on on your show so yeah um, Ben mentioned something about the challenges of Niger African fighters uh, over there in the UK talking about their support uh, in their home countries uh, with all of these happening do you think that there's hope for the Nigerian boxer Of course um, what he was trying to say is basically a Nigerian boxer in in the UK for example right yeah. he or she wants to represent you know their flag the Nigerian flag mm -hmm. And it's, it's very difficult when you ask, um, you know, British organizations or any other country to represent another country's uh, boxer yeah. um, when we are not doing enough. So it's one of those things where, um, you know, we need to do our part here, you know, and create a different image, um, you know, opposite to what it has been for the last couple of years. And that's why, you know, we've been working so hard um, um, with pro boxing in, in Nigeria and, and creating a platform mm. and obviously you guys in the media, you know, we can all put hands together and make this and make this work out. Mm. Um, we've, I'm telling you, um, the talents that we have in Nigeria right now, you know, this group of upcoming boxers, mm -hmm. this is the perfect chance for us to take action because, you know, this decade of, of boxers are, are special. You know, um, uh, you know, they can become world champions. A lot of big names out there. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, this is the right time to do it. And, you know, like how you guys are showing fights and highlights and all that. And like Larry mentioned, you know, um, if if media houses can have a program where once a week or once every two weeks to show upcoming talents and Nigerian boxers abroad, it will be very, very helpful. True. Now, let's talk about Larry. He's one of the boxers out of many that has been somewhat consistent. Um, what else needs to be done? Because we have a couple of other fighters who want to be like him, but have not gotten that opportunity yet. What can we do to push these guys out there? Well, first of all, we need to be honest with ourselves, you know. Um, credit to, to, to sponsors that, um, you know, get involved with other sports in the country, um, you know, but we have to understand and, and, and admit it, you know, to ourselves that boxing, like I said earlier, is is our chance to become world champions. And and in terms of um, revenue and funds, it's a big sport. If, if, we, if we can put hands together and, you know, make the sport big and all that, I don't see why we cannot uh, promote a world title fight for the likes of Larry Kundai or Tony Salam in Nigeria itself. And that opens the road for, you know, more uh, boxing shows, more titles and, 
and 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 so forth. So I think it's 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 about you know government and uh, corporate sponsors and we promoters on ground, you know, to put hands together and see how we can do this. And moreover, you know, if we promote something like this, um, you know. Lagos or Abuja can be ranked, you know, among the sports cities in the world, which will open businesses for Nigeria itself. So we really need to look at the big picture, you know, and and the right people need to sit on the table and and listen to each other, you know, and and plan it because we know boxing, we know how to do it, we know the talents, we've got the talents, um, you know, each one has a task. The, the government officials can open some doors. The media houses can open some doors. And, and we promote shows. And corporate sponsors will come in. And the platform is, you know, you know it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's, it's so logic, you know, for us to just do boxing in the country and combat sports and all that. And, you know, bring business for Nigeria and bring uh, victory for the country and raise the flag higher. Because you know we're all tired of of, of stories like um, you know like we have Nigerian boxers abroad and you know people asking us do you think he's representing Britain or do you think he's representing Nigeria you know it hurts sometimes to to hear something like that uh, uh, because inside you know that you know this guy is a Nigerian boy or a Nigerian female boxer you know from 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 the grassroots. Very true. Now. Talking about that and, and grassroots now, I'd like to combine two questions, but let's take it one, one, one at a time. Starting from the grassroots now, how much of um, publicity has been given to the grassroots uh, in the country? Because it feels like we're not even discovering these talents from our tertiary education and also seems like the grassroots isn't working in the country. Well, you know, I, I don't think there's been enough publicity in terms of uh, the grassroots and all that. Uh, from our side in Sada Gloves Promotions, you know, we, we keep going and visiting every corner. We've been doing that for a couple of years already. We try to get videos out there. We try to speak about them. Um, you know, you see some uh, news channels, they come in, they do a video and they go about it and, and they post it uh, on their pages and, you know, it's more exposure. Um, but my problem is that we don't follow up on it, you know, so the video goes out there and then the story dies there. So we need to, we need to um, get more of these grassroots shows and fights on uh, TV, basically. We need to, we need to, it needs media, that's what it needs, you know, and, 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 and that's a great start. And, you know, obviously, um, there has to be a better infrastructure, you know, in terms of uh, fitness centers and gym, boxing gyms, basically. And that's how, that's, that's the way forward, you know. There, there's two sides of the things. There's the plan for the grassroots and there's the plan of the existing boxers who are ranked already, you know, and, and ranked high. So there ha there's, there's two projects here. There's, there's one of grassroots and infrastructure and all that to focus on and put some media on it. And then you've got the, the, the champions who, you know, their fights need to be televised more and uh, corporate sponsors can work uh, with very true. Now, lastly, let's let's talk about the state of the boxers in Nigeria. After their hopes of qualifying for the Olympics was somewhat thrown out of the window, because I saw the state of these boxers, they they were bitter and they wanted to go represent the country. And we heard um, rumors like uh, some of these boxers were not good enough to represent the country. And I'm like, if they, if, if they were not good enough, you had enough time to prepare these fighters for the Olympics. So what went wrong? Let's talk about this. Um, in terms of boxers not being enough, um, let me just start with uh, one of the, you know, the boxers in the team, Abdulafiz Oshoba. Abdulafiz Oshoba is ranked uh, number 10 in the world, number 10 welterweight boxer in the world. Um, he won silver medal in the last All-African Championship. He's ranked number two in Africa. So I don't see how he, he's not good enough, for example. Other boxers that were involved uh, included the, the likes of Tony Sugar Salam, who you know, uh, is a WBF African champion. You know, to, uh, people like Tony Salam just need two or three fights to become world world champion. So I don't see um, um, why, uh, you know, some people would say that. And then you have other boxers who have won gold and silver medals in all African championship uh, competition in the last one that are also in the team. So uh, that are ranked top 10 in Africa. So I don't see where, you know, I, for me, it was more of an excuse, you know, because if you want to say something like this, we can, you know, bring out facts and bring out records and see where exactly these guys stand. Mm. Very true. So you believe that we have hopes of going to the Olympics and probably grabbing the gold uh, trophy, I mean, the gold medal at uh, the tournament? 
Well, obviously, um, hopefully the next time um, the the trials and the camp will be a bit more organized because, um, as, as you're aware, uh, it was a, a very short uh, trial and camp. If yeah. you give them a proper camp, proper facility for a couple of months, a couple of weeks uh, before before they go for the qualification, I don't see why we cannot, uh, um, you know, come back with uh, with a medal from from wherever the, the Olympics will be, if it's still in Japan. All right, thank you very much. And as you go, um, is there any plan for Sally Glove promotion, uh, probably after the, the pandemic? What are your plans? Well, we started a platform, uh, the first and only uh, platform called uh, Las Gidi Fight Night. We started it last year. It's the first and only monthly pro boxing show in Nigeria. We've done a couple of editions already. Uh, we're going to continue that because it keeps the boxers busy and they have a platform to fight. Uh, it's it's unlike the other bigger shows that we do because we have like 10 to 12 bouts. And the reason being is so that other boxers can have opportunities to build their record and be active and fight and, and, and stay there. So we're going to continue that. And obviously, uh, we had plans to open a, a boxing gym uh, right before the pandemic. We'll look back into that. We're going to open a boxing gym, and it's going to be um, free for um, Nigerian boxers with their licenses. All right. Thank you very much, Sally, for speaking with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me.